Okay, God bless you all. Today is uh, 11-24-2017, 24, 2017, day after Thanksgiving. And my book came in today. This is by uh, Lou Engel it's, and Derek Prince. It's called Shaping History Through Prayer and Fasting. And uh, man, I, I just knew that if I were to get this, it'd be a burning book. So I just opened the page. I told my mom, mom, mom it's going to be a burning book. And sure enough, it is. So uh, and here's what, what's cool. is I, So I ordered it, I think, three days ago. And I realized that Amazon told me it would come in. It's only like $9 on Amazon, by the way. So I, I recommend getting it if you can. Uh, or just get it. You know, just get it. You know. But anyway, um, we got to lose, man. This thing, it, it, when you find fire, man, it's worth 9 bucks. I mean, you go to Whataburger and spend 10 bucks. Come on. Anyway, uh, so, so, I, 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 so I ordered it. And I realized it would come in after the day after Thanksgiving. I'm like, man, that's pretty prophetic right there. You know, because after the feast, man, sometimes time for a fast, and then we fast in preparation for the feast, right? Because all Christians are fasting one way or another uh, in preparation for the day they enter the kingdom, and they feast forever, man. We're always feasting. It's amazing. Man. We'll be feasting with the Lord Jesus and all his angels and all his saints, man, St. Saint Michael, St. Saint Gabriel, man. Come on, come on, dude. The same, pe the same people who lived back when Jesus, St. Paul, the apostles, Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, we're going to be feasting with all of them forever right now. If we just fast during this quick, short little life, man, we'll be there. It'll be amazing, dude. Uh, anyway, so, and then, so the day after that, I went to a Greek place and this guy, this, so this was the next day I was at Agora. So not yesterday, but the day before. And I ran into this guy I know from, uh, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, and he was he was saying that uh that um he did a 26 day fast, you know, and I just ordered this the day before, and he did it when he was in Greece, and it was so it's kind of funny because we're at like a Greek coffee shop. But anyway, so I got this book, and I just want to read a little bit to you. And you tell me this isn't fire. And what was cool was so I, I opened this, and the the next page that I wrote that I read was a uh, a reading I read on on stage at church yesterday. I read it up at church. In front of the mass, and I, I you know, I, haven't, I don't do very much lecturing, so it's kind of cool. But anyway, so check this out. So this is in regards to the Battle of Jehoshaphat, and it, and they, so Lou Engel speaking on three lessons to be learned from the battle against Jehoshaphat. Check this out. So the outcome described in verses 22 through 30. So this is Second Chronicles 20. There was no need for God's people to use any kind of military weapon. You know, sometimes I meet these Christians who are so into guns, it disturbs me, but different story. The entire army of their enemies destroyed themselves, leaving not a single survivor. All that God's people needed to do was to spend three days gathering the spoils and then to return in triumph to Jerusalem with their voices raised in loud thanksgiving and praise to God. Furthermore, the impact of this tremendous, check this out, dude, here, this is so key. This is so key because we war not against flesh and blood, okay? So listen to this. Furthermore, the impact of this tremendous supernatural victory, okay, it goes, it goes beyond the flesh, was felt by all the surrounding nations. From then on, no other nation dared to contemplate hostilities against Jehoshaphat and his people. Three practical lessons can be learned from Jehoshaphat's victory. All three apply with equal force to Christians in this age. And I've got to repent of some of this stuff because I have been... I'll get into it later, but anyway. First of all, the anti-Christian forces that are at work in the world today are just as hostile and just as formidable as the army that threatened Judah in the days of Jehoshaphat. These forces are united in hatred and opposition toward all who truly love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. They are not concerned about internal denominational distinctions among Christians. They are not disposed to spare the Baptists at the expense of the Methodists, nor the Catholics at the expense of the Pentecostals. Therefore, this is no time for Christians to emphasize sectarian or denominational issues that have in the past divided us. That's something I need to repent of. I get too legalistic sometimes. I get too, you know, I mean, because it, it's love. You know, the great the great law is love, but, but still, I mean, the, the, the doctrine is extremely important, but... What binds us together is more important than what separates us. I truly believe that. Uh, rather, it is time for all God's people to follow the example of Judah and to unite in fasting and prayer, man. Because, you know, 
in my own life, like there's only so many breakthroughs that I get that come through fasting and prayer. I can do a lot of stuff, you know, jump up and down, go to church, worship. But man, it's not till I just fast that I really begin to see God just move, stretch out his mighty hand. And I just know breakthrough is coming because I see it. I can, I feel, I get a world, but in my mind, I'll say breakthrough is here. One time I woke up in the middle of the night from a dream. And this was about a year ago. I'd just gotten more serious about prayer and praying and fasting. I woke up in the middle of the night and I said, breakthrough is here. Breakthrough is here. Man, since that day, my whole spiritual walk changed. So I'm going to continue with now. Second, the story of Jehoshaphat demonstrates the need. This does not say the good, the good, uh, uh, it, it doesn't say like, the key word is need, okay? I don't know what I'm trying to say, but the key word is need, okay? The need for spiritual gifts, it's essential. If you're fighting an enemy that's not flesh and blood, and you don't have spiritual gifts, how do you win that war? I just don't think it's a fair fight. But with spiritual gifts, man, suddenly the battle can be one-sided because the Almighty is on our side. It was the gift of prophecy that gave both encouragement and direction to Judah in the hour of crisis. The supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit are still needed just as much by the church today. Nor does the Bible suggest that God ever intended to withdraw these gifts from the church. In 1 Corinthians 1, 7 through 8, Paul thanked God on behalf of the Corinthian believers saying, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the days of our Lord Jesus Christ. Clearly, Paul both expected and desired that the spiritual gifts would continue to operate in the church right up to the return of Christ in the end of the age. Likewise, in the book of Acts, Peter quoted the prophecy of Joel and applied to our present age. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And all my servants and all my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And, uh, man, you know, like the past few weeks, man, I've been getting, like, like ridiculous, you know, just just uh, 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 prayers for people, like just ridiculous anointing, you know, just ridiculous, uh, just, just amazing. You know, last night I went and I saw an old buddy of mine, dude named uh, Brennan Hansen. I knew him at Clearbrook, and I ran into him. Uh, I knew him at Clearbrook. First first class I ever had at Clearbrook was was with him, and I hadn't seen him along. I I, I haven't seen him uh, much. You know, I ran into him before, told him about Jesus. But I ran into him again, and the last and like the last time I saw him, I think it was like the first time I've seen him. You know, in years. So anyway, so I prayed for him this time. I saw him. And I got this, I got, I, I said this, I said, God, I thank you that his purpose is not found in a Tony Robbins or a self-help book, a Tony Robbins self-help book. I'm not, I'm not bashing Tony Robbins. I'm just saying. And then I got this image of Barnes and Noble in my mind. And I was just thinking that he had been shopping there for self-help books. And apparently it's Barnes and Noble has a self-help section. I didn't even know that till yet to last night when I told somebody the story. And, uh, so after I done praying for him, I said, so man, you ever go to self-help books? He's like, yeah, I man, I used to go to that, you know, when I was in my, uh, you know, before I changed my life or whatever, I would go there and try to, you know, find the, the meaning of life. Uh, shoot, you know, the, the, this past uh, Sunday, you know, I was with some people after church, man, and I was getting words of knowledge for them. You know, uh, uh, Kim Sunderman, Keno Gonzalez, uh, Jane Flunker, Fred Sunderman, all these people were there with me. You know, you can go talk to them and verify it. You know, I mean, there, were, there, was, there was a guy at the Walmart, man. I started praying for three people, three separate people. One lady, uh... I mean, a guy was on my left, a guy on my right, lady in the middle. I had my two hands like this. I said to the guy on my left, I, I was praying. I said, God, I thank you that this man right here, God, he's always wanted to write the book. God, I thank you that he has time to write that book. He so desperately wants to write, Father. And I said, this man over here, God, I squeezed his shoulder so they knew I was talking about him. I was specific, man. Because God will unlock that 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 spiritual vision, man, if you just if you just seek him. You know, I mean, just seek him. Seek righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom. Anyway, so I, I started uh, uh, praying for him, and I was like, God, man, I just thank you that this man loves the guitar. I see him glorifying your kingdom with the guitar. And then right in front of me, I said, and this lady right here, God, she so loves children. God, I pray she works with children. God, I pray she uses that gift. 
And uh, every single one of them was right. And they were like, dude, that's ridiculous. How did you know that? And I said, Jesus is real. That's how. And uh, so anyway, I wound up getting the dude's number. And, uh, you know, it's just it's just so much fun, dude. It's, it's just so much fun. Like, if you really believe that God can move in mighty ways, step out, man. Step out of the boat. I'm going to be praying for you today. All right? I pray Jesus would unlock a double portion in your life and that you would love him more than life itself. God bless you.